presenting for the Giga map, Transcending Dualities of Gender Identities. It is a systemic approach of mapping the influence on the lives of trans individuals in India. It aims to serve as a valuable resource for diverse audiences, including parents, educators, policymakers, and the public. It explains what is gender, gender identity, and sexuality. It also delves deeper into understanding their influences on trans individuals. Today, we'll provide a concise overview of our approach and how the process of mapping significantly supported our research premise. So we began by exploring gender concepts through various mind maps, leading us to conduct in-person surveys aiming at grasping the perceptions of today's youth regarding gender. This sparked candid conversations, which were later supported by mapping evidence and data. This facilitated the identification of key themes like gender dysphoria and coming out. Subsequently, we engaged in deeper discussions with members of the transgender community to validate our initial hypothesis and gain insights into their realities and lived experiences. Bringing together all of our discoveries, a synthesis session enabled the creation of a systemic causal map and a brief stakeholder overview with the objective of pinpointing the most influential stakeholders. Our research aims to democratize the information by visually mapping. To achieve this goal, we designed a giga map that is mainly divided into three sections. The first section focuses on the history and hierarchy within the communities like Hijra in India, while aiming to dispel the misconceptions and the stereotypes. The core of the giga map are the life journeys of individuals from diverse socioeconomic backgrounds. So this section actually visually represents key observations, such as the average age of self-realization and coming up. Central to these narratives are pivotal moments that shape their path towards dignity, including familial support, vulnerability to incidents such as bullying, and the emotional trajectories of each individual. A reoccurring pattern emerges, marked by phases of confusion, fear, stress, and followed by joy post-affirmation treatments, highlighting the importance of honesty. <clears throat> yeah, sorry. Uh, yeah, so the synthesized causal map depicts a multitude of factors and their interconnections within the system. Finally, it focuses on strategic areas of substantial impact, where deliberate efforts can be channeled to enhance the overall system. All in all, the map aims to provide meaningful suggestions on how one can contribute positive change, empowering readers, to make a difference in their own spheres of influence. I would also like to say from my team, thank you so much to RST, Cheryl, for giving us this platform to showcase our work. Thank you. Thank you, Tanvi. Uh, um, would like to hear more about it while we uh, enter into the discussion session. Um, so thanks for that. And now I would like to invite Aniket and team, which would be, uh, they would be discussing about child abandonment. Yeah. Hi, greetings, everyone. So today I'll be taking you through our systems thinking and giga map design for the topic of child abandonment crisis in India. So um, just to give a little bit of context of what exactly is child abandonment. So first was to understand how the whole act of the abandonment really happens and understanding the different terminologies that are linked to it. So terms like foundling, baby dumping, and the legalities of acts which back around the child abandonment uh, crisis in India were studied. 
But one of the main reasons was why exactly had this topic uh, required these systems thinking and this 10 week uh, long of research required. So this was just a collection of few newspaper headings while we were doing our research for this particular topic. The numbers speak volume of the growing child abandonment crisis here in India with almost reaching the 30 million mark with the UNICEF study, which had which has been conducted in 2023. We also studied the different um, states and the way in which the numbers in all of these states across India was also going up and rise. We've also studied how the different organizations help with rehabilitation too. So this helped us give a context about how exactly the child abandonment crisis in India was going on in the year of 2023. Just a quick overview of how our process looked like. So it was broken down into the double diamond framework, um, going over the umbrellas of main six steps of finding the general challenges, conducting the research, systems mapping all of these different researchers we found, the leverage mapping, that is finding intervention in the system, and then lastly, the gigamap um, creation and developing solutions around the main uh, crisis area. Now, to give a quick overview of how exactly our research deck looked like, it was split into main two buckets of secondary research and primary research. Secondary research went along uh, literature reviews of understanding the different reports, repositories, articles, and papers so that we could educate ourselves before we go into the field and find out a lot more firsthand from the NGO workers. So once we educated ourselves with the secondary research, moving on to the primary, we had a couple of user interviews, site visits with different orphanages to understand firsthand what are the different social, cultural, ecological factors as to why child abandonment is happening currently in India. These are just a couple of topics which we have done desk research on, understanding beyond the borders of India, how exactly does um, child abandonment numbers look like across uh, countries in the world? how rural and urban babying dumping works, how child abandonment is depicted in media and literature and so forth. Once this was done, we moved on to our primary research. Now, this was uh, limited across a couple of states here in India, that is Karnataka and Kerala mostly. Over here, we got to talk to uh, different children and also the NGO workers who deal with such cases, understand how does the journey and rehabilitation of abandoned ch children look like. Once the research was done was to create insights out of all of this. So there were multiple insight cards which were drawn, but the top eight were some of the staggering insights which made us validate the different um, factors of what was causing child abandonment, about how female children were being abandoned a whole lot more, how they fell into the uh, realms of sex trafficking and begging rackets and so forth. So this was us trying to make sense of the abundance of research that we have done. Now, to more systematically think about all of this, we used various frameworks of system mappings. We started off with creating a mind map, or you could say a preliminary rendition of how a causal map would look like. Over here, different nodes and causes were put on paper, and sort of interconnection, interconnections between these different nodes were studied. Now, this was very preliminary and done even before we had done our primary research. But we soon realized that it was not just a child abandonment or a age specific uh, issue as in right as in right now we zoomed out to understand how does human abandonment work as a whole we split into different age sectors and realized that this is something that even someone who's going at 65 would also face like Ma mainly how it was with children abandoning their old age parents in homes so this helped us create a bigger picture and you could say help gain insight of not more than just child abandonment, it's human abandonment as a whole. We also took a new tangent of understanding what emotional abandonment is. Now, this is very subjective and not really looked into, but it really helped us understand that it's a subjective experience. And this was also having to be examined to understand why exactly physical abandonment um, is caused by. Now, lastly, coming into our actual causal map. Now, this um, was a causal map which was done across two weeks. Over here, we soon realized there were around 432 nodes and 560 relations that we had studied, over which we realized that there were positive and negative relations between each of these nodes. A lot of socioeconomical challenges, familial issues, and all of these factors were standing out from the causal map. 
post the causal map, we did a butter paper exercise of stakeholder mapping, wherein on top of the causal map, we sort of marked around the stakeholders responsible for each of these nodes to understand who are the change makers in each of these different areas or each of these different nodes. So around 355 stakeholders were recognized and categorized depending upon the power hierarchy, post which the final output was to find leverage points from the system. So we as design students, what would we, what would we do to help this particular crisis that's happening? So we could probably design a service or a campaign to probably help uh, increase the awareness for care of pregnant women and nutrition and so forth. Now, moving on to the final gigamap development, how do we create the story of such a sensitive topic that could create impact to the audience that is viewing this uh, particular map? Starting with a metaphor or a visual storytelling or a key or a crush that we could use. So we use the metaphor of showing that abandonment feels like falling through the fabric of family. How the fabric of family is hold is uh, holding the child safe, but probably a hole in between these entwined strands goes through is when the child falls through and fails the society. So you have different factors over here, like communication, kindness, boundaries, and so forth. Now, once a child falls through the fabric of family, they come to the second net of redemption. Now, over here, this is the second chance that's being offered to an abandoned child. So this could be rehabilitation, adoption pool, and so forth. But as you can see, the hands depict the stakeholders who are responsible for these particular uh, net and their actions. You could see that they're a little vulnerable and not that closely entwined, like as in the fabric of family. Then you come into the brutal forces, that is a net of survival. This is the part where it happens that the society has failed, the family has failed, the government has failed, and they sort of resort to all of the brutal forces of society. That is, they get into child labor, the begging rackets, um, the different um, unhygienic environments, animal attacks, and unfortunately, almost 80% of children end in the pit of death. So this was the visual aid or the metaphor that we sort of used as a crutch to explain the whole journey of an abandoned child. Now, when it comes to our actual giga map, this is how we sort of stitched it all together. The first section is to set context of why exactly child abandonment crisis is happening in India so that we could educate the user about how the current status is. Moving on slowly, we first begin with the fabric of family, the initial net, and once that fails, they fall into the whole intricate web of the causes as to why exactly child abandonment is happening in India. Then the net of redemption, that is the second chance that is being presented, and we've also sort of um, created an effect mapping for the same. Then the net of survival, the brutal realities, and lastly, the pit of death. And sort of as like a North Star project, we have given a card talking about the different leverage points in the system. So as to tell the users that this is not the end, these are the areas in which we could intervene and create changes in the society. Because at the end of the day, that was the main reason why this topic was being picked so that we could create awareness and bring a change in this crisis that is going up in numbers currently in India. So yes, that brings me to the end of my presentation. Thank you, thank you so much. Thanks, Pravati. That was a critical topic to be explored and um, the way it has been represented uh, and the giga mapping style and um, collating all of the different elements together. Um, thank you. And um, probably uh, we'll be having more discussion about it. So I'd like to call um, Shweta and team uh, who will be discussing about sustainability. Uh, we are here to represent the topic of unsustainable loop of sustainability mapped by the four of us during our master's program at NID. The mapping is not just about sustainability, but focuses on whether our sustainable efforts are looping back into unsustainable behaviors. Uh, refers to a wicked loop uh, generated due to the short-term alternatives used to solve the long-term piled up uh, issues affecting our current world. So uh, when we say, what are we mapping? We are actually trying to uncover the wicked loop of sustainability. It represents the complex relationship between the short-term thinking profit-driven motives that reinforce the unsustainable behaviors, continuing to boost our capitalistic economy. This is the Giga map, and uh, you would say it's rather colorful, but it's exactly what we were trying to uh, deceive you with, just like greenwashing does to cover up the reality of our world. Um, so we'll start with the first half of the map, which is deriving the unsustainable equation. 
uh, this is where uh, we started understanding sustainability more through cases uh, which we could study through frameworks and moreover to the uh, basic ideal concept of sustainability which was a traditional history that we all were aware without even being aware of it so in our case in the indian context where it was always ingrained in our culture without even a sort of terminology derived for it at the very start uh, then from there we come to what we call the unsustainable equation it's a pretty simple equation it uh, focuses on how unsustainable practices of today are being retrofitted with sustainable solutions without addressing the systemic complexity which lead to even more harmful problems in the future uh, furthermore, we started mapping what we call the perpetual loop of unsustainability. Now, uh, this is inspired by the Penrose Triangle that we all know as is, is an illusion. So we understand that sustainability and unsustainability, the loop itself is an illusion, which we can break through by looking at it from a very different perspective. That means on a systemic level. Um, here is a bit uh, of our map where we have tried to do it as a double Penrose because it's double complex. And what we're trying to show here is that there is a lot of, on the left, as you can see, there is an inflow of trends which are constantly being pushed into the loop, which reinforces the loop constantly. And the central area, that is, that is basically uh, our business as usual, as we would say, which is all pretty. And on the side, which we can't see, is the effects which are caused due to these business as usual uh, instances. And reinforcing this entire loop is... a uh, stakeholder map which we have derived at the bottom as you can see it def uh, definites itself into primary secondary and tertiary but what we realized that the loop could be broken and there is a ray of hope so we met a few people who are actually trying to break the loop and from there we come to the last part of the map where we map out how we could actually break the loop so here are the intervention areas and we realize that the major focus has to be on behavior change. And we try to devise our, um, how might we, as you would say, into immediate future, near future and far futures. Um, furthermore, we try to address the near future by addressing our future generations at our own college. We created a few tools and workshops for them to understand how sustainability is supposed to be a part of the design process itself, rather than being it an afterthought. Uh, from there, we came to what we call maybe a new equation, where we put in the concept of minus, which is removing the isolated interventions. And also the minus stands for the basic word that sustainability should be related to, that is enough. So use only what is enough for the present to leave enough for the future. I think that's it. From Thank you so much for inviting us. Thank you, Sandhya. Uh, I was just thinking about the Penrose Triangle and changing of the perspective. Probably the perspective itself is illusory, even though if you change the the way you perceive it. Anyway, so I'll, I'll keep it short right now. Uh, probably we'll move on to the consumerism team, uh, following on Amandeep and team. Hello, everyone. Uh, we are a team of uh, students of information design and universal design. We are Amandeep, Gagarina, Komal, Monis, Oshal, and Sachin. Uh, throughout this project, we have been guided by our faculties, Chakradhar, Balaji, uh, Sridhar, Niju, and Nupur. And our topic is consumerism and its impact on socioeconomic growth and environmental sustainability in India. Consumerism uh, refers to the growing trend of people consuming goods and services beyond their basic needs. India is the most populous and fastest growing consumer market, and it has led to economic growth, but at the same time, a multitude of socioeconomic and environmental challenges. Our project here helps to highlight these challenges through uh, this Giga map. The why of consumerism is often linked to the growth of industrialization, socioeconomic comparison, leading to a hideous cycle of hedonic loop. Often uh, there are unintended sufferers of this loop. We created an infographic in the form of a system map from our secondary and primary research to understand the causal relations between various components involved. Here is a simple version of the map where uh, inequality of opportunities lead to socioeconomic hierarchy, acting as enablers for more and more consumerism and further leading to unequal sufferings across the social strata and environmental degradation. 
We looked into various case studies prevalent in the current uh, Indian society and forcing our system map. To understand when consumerism had its origin roots in India, we delved into the study of a timeline. As a metaphor of environmental degradation in the timeline, we have uh, represented this illustrated tree, which depicts uh, biodiversity and natural uh, resources. And throughout the timeline, we see how it has been degrading uh, right from prehistory to current times. Along the timeline, we also explored key factors like economic liberalization, green revolution, uh, industrial revolution, etc., that catalyzed its rise and examined the path that led us to our current state. To have a symbolic representation of the economic and social structures that underpin modern uh, consumerism, we have created an illustrated consumerism tower. This design highlights the vertical stratification of our society with individuals in different socioeconomic classes occupying different levels of the tower, representing the working conditions towards the left and the living conditions towards the right, keeping uh, the center of the tower as the main supply chain. And down below, we also see how the process of consumerism is leading to degradation of natural resources, creating disturbances in the natural order. We identified uh, 12 leverage points within the system following the structure proposed by Donella Meadows. By focusing on leverage points, we have the potential to dismantle the foundations of a dystopian reality, paving the way for a desired protopic vision to immerse and flourish. We tried to link these leverage points to visual representation within the consumerism tower. One example to cite here would be how a person driven by maximalist lifestyle and hedonic loop is attracted to purchase more and more and ultimately leads a life of throwaway culture. The consequences of these are suffered by the lower strata of society. This scenario highlights one of the most powerful leverages in our system map, which is uh, the leverage of defining and strengthening one's personal values that is opting for minimalism over consumerism and aiming at pro-environmental behavior. With the identified leverages, we developed a framework to visually represent the stakeholders within our system map as actors and barriers to desired future. And we identified key issues which might hinder an actor to become an agent for environmental and social sustainability. Further, we also explored the donut economic model developed by Kate Raworth that highlights the importance of ensuring that everyone has access to essential resources represented in the inner ring of the donut while staying within environmental limits to preserve the health of our planet represented by the outer ring. By placing ourselves within this model, we unlock the potential to make informed choices and contribute to a thriving society within the safe operating space of our planet. This project has ultimately helped us to choose relevant problem areas, which we further developed into service design solutions individually. And the GigaMap has also guided us to give objective solutions to our individual topics by incorporating these various leverage points as ways of moving forward towards a desired future, making us designers uh, small agents for change. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, Irina. Um... Uh, and uh, I just wanted to let you know that uh, Peter Jones, Professor Peter Jones is over here. So he would be joining us. Um, and also Mary would be providing her with her valuable comments uh, for the presenters. And uh, we can start with the conversation right now. Yeah, I, I'm, think, I'm guessing it should be a dialogical conversation. So presenters and team could take part in it um, and intervene wherever you feel like during the conversation. So yes, Marie, you can um, oh, probably I'm sorry. go ahead. So it's for me. I was thinking if uh, Peter starts or me, but um, yes, sorry. Um, maybe I can say a couple of words about me so you understand where the comments are coming or my view. So I'm Marie Sohem. I work here at the Oslo School of Architecture and Design as a service designer, um, as a said professor. And I also use the systemic lens to do my work. And I've been investigating mess maps and recently giga maps on how to understand uh, the complexities we face in service design. 
And I myself, I'm a Finnish, born to Finnish parents, but I also lived in Brazil 13 years. That's that's why I have a Brazilian citizenship and also have an angle of it to understand the global South. Also uh, spent a little time in Africa. And um, uh, today I live in, in Norway, been here two years and have a Norwegian citizenship as well. And I must say that I really enjoyed and the topics you've selected to work on, I think they're all extremely uh, important and, and fascinating and very happy that you are working with them. And um, in the first presentation of the transcending dualities of gender identities, I much appreciate the topic you are working on. I imagine it's much um, uh, under research area in design and uh, certainly needs some interventions to have better uh, equalities for um, for all all human beings, and uh, it was impressive how um, differently you have processed the information uh, with mind maps, affinity maps, giga maps, and then condensed all the, all that actually into a giga map. And uh, I was curious if I can make a question that the observations uh, how were they made and. Um, and how did you include stakeholders in the process? Is it okay to do, do questions? <laughs> uh, I can take yeah. that from my team. Yeah. So the way we went about handling and actually finding people from the trans community was mm -hmm. one of the most challenging part. Um, a lot of people might not know, but it's a very undignified community in India. So getting hang of these, you know, uh, individuals was really challenging. And mm -hmm. I think we went about really looking in certain places that you actually see trans community a lot and that's how we started getting into the community and getting word by word we also went around actually asking our friends who knew who belonged to uh, lgbtq plus community and that is how we started having those conversations that actually got us to knowing their lived experiences per se that's great. Uh, good to hear. And how do you feel that these observations uh, influenced the mapping you did? Um, I, to a certain extent, a lot of visual representation was trying to really keep that emotional aspect mm -hmm. in place and not really letting that entirely taken away from the Giga map. And I think um, a lot of it was also to look at and emphasize on the amount of um, observations and em emphasize on the amount of impact it actually could have on the community. So that was the basic intent. And we just went around with having that intuition to keep those stories intact. So we also had bubbles mm -hmm. that represented their day-to-day -day, uh, mm -hmm. challenges, which sort mm -hmm. of were an intention to bring that or not leave it all alone. Mm -hmm. That's excellent. Good to visualize those those challenges and make them like visible, the hidden things. And um, did, did they participate in the mapping process somehow in the sessions of mapping or your users or stakeholders? Um, not particularly. Unfortunately, we couldn't really get them to get to talk about or get part or participate while we are mapping, but we did have a slight chance to actually run it through the community where people who were, you know, um, had that for ha were at literate positions where they could actually, you know, contribute to the map. That is where we actually went to get get the feedback and validated from uh, people in the community. Mm -hmm. That's good. Too. You have had some loops to go with the people. That's great. Mm -hmm. That's super. Well, congratulations for your work. And uh, shall we go to the next one about the child abandonment crisis? And um, it's very Im impactful, I think, the how you started the presentation and brought uh, the hard figures and statistics of um, uh, how this is a big uh, issue and, and challenging issue. And also, I'm impressed how you have used different data collection methods for making the mapping. And uh, 
you visited orphanages to collect some data and uh, and also the findings about uh, the human abandoned in in general the emotional abandon abandonment and uh, I think you brought many diverse angles or lenses to look look at thing that thing so I think that's really valuable and um, you use causal map um, and on top of the stakeholder map is quite interesting also how to find that you've had over 300 stakeholders that should be involved somehow so you see how largely wicked problem you are handling handling so uh, that's that's impressive and you had so beautiful visualizations and the metaphors like uh, falling out of the net and um, may, and if I can make a question so as I maybe as a service designer I always think of the people and their involvement so how, how was for you like to involve those uh, stakeholders in the mapping process how how did you involve them you had the orphanage visits but how other ways did you involve the stakeholders yes okay thank you so much Mary so in the way how we found out the stakeholders was um, mostly the way how we incorporated was to try to understand the power hierarchy so we realized that ju just showing the causes of why exactly this was happening was not enough we really had to back it up to show who exactly was responsible for these causes that were happening so it was something that went very interlinked along with the causal mapping so like how we said we use the uh, butter uh, paper uh, activity it sort of helped realize that it's it's something that if we have to create a change in this particular node of the causal map this particular stakeholder has to be linked to it so i think it was a process which was going hand in hand so right when we started doing our primary research, we started noting down the different stakeholders in the different areas or the different journeys of um, how a, an abandoned child is rehabilitated. So I think we carried forward all of those findings from the research and very well kept it in mind why we were doing the causal mapping in itself. So I, I think the research really helped us talking to those different NGO organizations and also while we were uh, doing the zooming out version of the human abandonment, we also realized that we had to not just look at uh, primary visits to orphanages, we also went and visited a couple of old age homes too. So over there, we also got um, valid reasons to put a stakeholder in that particular uh, bucket and then give them the power hierarchy so that when we come up with leverage points, we know that this is who we have to target and this is the areas in which that particular change is going to be impacted. So it was it was a hand-in-hand -hand process with the causal mapping. Mm, that's great to hear that you're like uh, getting data from the field and putting it into mapping itself. Yes. I think it's very valuable. And and how, how did you were able to make like focus groups, workshops with the participants, like do the actual mapping with them or? Um, so the mapping activity per se was yeah. just done by the team members. Okay. So it was just the four of us, which, yeah. and we were also aided by the professors mm. who were mentoring us. But I feel more or less uh, the primary research and the findings, those were mostly uh, done on field and then the research was taken and then we sort of made sense of the research that we had collected. So the stakeholders, you could say, would probably not understand the intricate web and the activity of a causal map. So we were sort of the uh, third party that was just collecting and making sense of the different causes and the different factors that we found out on field. Mm -hmm. uh, that's good to hear. Have you had like time or or have plans or have you done it already? Like how to the all that you learned, like to share with that community so that they wow. they gain the knowledge as well. Or yes, yeah. So we haven't really shared the giga map with the community, but mm -hmm. a lot of us have worked on our solutioning for the leverage points so that um, we could uh, work in part with the community and then bring that solution forward. So for example, um, individually, when we had to work on that solutioning, I worked on a mobile uh, child uh, pickup service. So how in the USA, they have these uh, baby baskets in fire stations. Um, I proposed a solution where there could probably be a hotline number that probably a parent in distress could uh, call and then the van would particularly come to pick up the child. So there were these uh, couple of solutioning paths where which we went back to the community and validated with the uh, different NGO workers and the communities. But the actual Giga map itself, we've not gotten a chance to go back and uh, validate with the community. Mm. 
Okay. Well, thank you. But uh, thank congratulations you. for the work. I, it's very impressive. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mary. And then we have the presentation of unsustainable loop of sustainability, uh, which is a wicked loop. And um, uh, there are interesting points, but we pointed out how uh, this, there's a lot of short-term thinking, capitalistic way of, uh, of economic consumerism. And uh, and and I and enjoyed the part that you were telling how uh, people um, talking to people who are trying to break the loop. So that's that's really great. And then you found some intervention areas. And um, and and I'm also like thinking, could you tell how you have beyond that um, talking to the people that are breaking the loop? Which other stakeholders have you made part of the process of of your mapping? Yeah, so with respect to breaking the loop, we realized that apart from the people who are already doing it, we actually, um, the main uh, thing was as uh, intervening with our own fellows, because we as designers, we tend to talk about sustainability a lot, but uh, it becomes an afterthought every time. So why not we start putting it as a part of the design process itself? So those mm -hmm. were a few people that we actually uh, went to to talk to as well. Mm -hmm. They were really available in our campus, so we could actually interact with them. And yeah, yeah, that can be a nice, like way of snowball sampling. You talk with one, one talks, then says, "Oh, you need to talk with that one or something." So, I think that that can be very curious and nice. And uh, yeah, and and how how did you share like this information you get with the community in question, or um, in the sense, the information that we derived back to the community? Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, uh, so we did actually keep on going back to them because we needed to understand what we're doing with respect to uh, the interventions make sense with mm. them as well or not. And uh, as I mentioned before, uh, like we had workshops and toolkits that we set up as final interventions in the starting near future stages, which we actually asked our own fellows to take part, a part into it and so that they could involve it in their design processes to finally come out with outcomes. And actually they did. They start, did start considering it to be a part of the process rather than afterthought. Mm -hmm. Good. I, I very much enjoyed the tower visualization that you had and kind of hurt my heart how you like show how the, there are the different layers and how we are built on other shoulders that we shouldn't shouldn't be that way and how we could like that visualization or makes me think how to break those structures and um and i feel like it's like this new kind of or new kind of colonialism of today's world that we can continue using um um like um cheap labor uh, and 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 like these sweatshops or there's a lot of like things that should be still done i think um and socially and 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 in a sustainable manner and and it very very much hurts me how how we have the cir circle um the loop going continuing i think not much has changed from the colonial times which just shaped the form so um there's a lot to do in in this and uh, peter do you do you want to comment on um, I could comment on the maps uh, in general. I mean, I think the, uh, I've kind of uh, come into the conversation uh, a little bit later, and and I'm uh, in my uh, understanding uh, of the details of, of each of the presentations. I mean, is is somewhat limited. I think the I'd, I'd like to actually see longer uh, presentations of of the of the work. I think there's there is uh, so much rich complexity and, and meaning that we can take from each of these and they are created in a way that uh, that I've always found as a as, as a major uh, difference in um, uh, in the NID style of, uh, of giga mapping and synthesis of you know of, of complexity in these in, in their in, in near process uh, is that you know these are these are like complete narratives that are that are presented visually. They can be they can be read um, independently without necessarily. That is, if someone takes the time and and explores them, they have uh, you know they have been translated in a way that that presents 
uh, the problems uh, you know that have been discovered, uh, the, the proposals for for intervention, the uh, the overall uh, uh, approach to the values are are very, really well presented, uh, uh, understandable. Um, so in in each of these, so I since I'm coming in a little later, I'll just say overall that uh, they are. Um, you know, these, this is a, a, a very good selection of, of well, I know there's, you know, so much, you know, continuing excellent work that, that's, that's being done at NID, and I'm glad to see uh, these being highlighted, um, you know, for, uh, you know, in, in the mapping Mondays. Uh, what, I, uh, what, uh, uh, what I'm finding in, um, uh, across them, I'd like, so what I'd like to see is, is that, there's a way that these can be published in, uh, in perhaps this is best done on the RSD site as well. But they can be at least for, uh, at least within our community, within the discourse community. But I wonder how else they can be published within India to, um, you know, so that they can be shared uh, more widely across the other uh, the other. Um, uh, stakeholder communities in which these could be, you know, uh, others that could be um, uh, where we could learn from, you know, from the work that you've done here. Um, and so that's one of the, you know, we have our own uh, uh, discourse community and have, have continued with RSD for many years, but also NID has had in the past other uh, other opportunities for, you know, for major presentation. And and I'm wondering where some of the where some of the other presentation opportunities have have come from, and, and where else other than other than the stakeholders that you've worked with directly, um, where else these maps might be shared, that that their impact might be um, discovered in in other communities. Is there anyone who would like to you know it has. Uh, a, uh, a you know a, uh, that has uh, a, a story or an, uh, a, an experience to share about about taking the maps further uh, within within India or to other um, present uh, other conferences or presentation communities. Uh, hello. Yeah. So I'm talking on behalf of uh, the trans. <laughs> Uh, dualities map. So the firstly, the map actually uh, started out as an aim to serve as a valuable resource for parents, educators, policymakers, and the public. So that is what our basis of starting out was. We definitely do want the map to reach to quite a lot wide communities for us to get back all of the feedback if we are going right if you're going wrong um etc and also include a lot of voices because our map is basically telling stories and narratives about individuals so we definitely want to include the community and their feedback into our map so what you said it definitely resonated with us so that we really would love to get this out in the world and get to know all of the different narratives that further we can uh, basically incorporate into our mind. Mm. Uh, and, and what has been tried, um, you know, at, at NID, especially, uh, you know, after, you know, what are the environments after, you know, the, the COVID era? Where uh, a lot of things were, were really brought online and we had RSD nine, you know, hosted it and NID was, you know, it was really all online except for the you know small teams that were on campus. So now you know have things um, opened up? Are there physical physical locations and other places where you know the the extraordinary you know spread and and um, you know the the kind of breathtaking art artistic impact that that these very large maps have. I mean, it's when we see them printed out in their full size, you know, at NID, one of the differences is, is that, you know, these are often the, the largest maps um, that any of us have, have seen in the different um, uh, gallery exhibits. So they do, uh, they do invite uh, an immersive type of experience. 
So um, have there been, you know, have there been a, other opportunities to share like that um, in, in other locations or in gallery, gallery spaces where we could engage people in the, in this, the discussions of the relationship of these problems to their own situations. Peter, I'm going to move that. Uh, I moved it to the chat for people to put in oh, ideas idea. or show where, where those were. I just want to make sure that we complete mm -hmm. uh, the feedback on the set of four maps. And I'm just going to hand it back to Mari to move us back to the fourth map and keep you there because I think you were there oh, for the last mm -hmm. presentation. Oh, right. Got it. And then we can have a bit of discussion about that, noting that we have 10 minutes left. So if we keep that brief, we at least have a little time for anyone uh, in the participant who are following who, to, to make comment. Great. Great. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you, Cheryl. So we have the Tower of Consumerism. And now I realize that I mixed a little bit the comments on these two last ones because they were both on sustainability and uh, and I thought that this this presentation was fantastic as well on way how you were visualizing the data and um, how you you were going through the environmental challenges and and the growing market the environment challenges that goes together with it and uh, I enjoyed seeing the timeline and the influence that has been happened throughout the timeline uh, you have historical uh, incidences that have been like um, um, influencing on this uh, development like industrial revolution etc and then you finish with the, also with the donut model how you can bring and some designs onto the uh, to this um, modeling uh, find some interventions and and bring e equality as well and uh, and and in this it was it was I guess it was in this presentation that you have the tower and uh, and there's people that are um, uh, on, on in the middle. So I thought um, that that's the visualization that I and, and system we should break. So uh, very impressive work in that sense. And uh, just make the same question that I'm interested also always as a service designer. So how did you involve? The users in the process and uh, and did, were they part of the mapping or or informants of the data and have you shared this knowledge that you gained with the community in terms of stakeholders i'll speak for the group in terms of stakeholders given the topic that we went about so it was quite broad so we mm -hmm. uh, we engaged with a lot of like we did our primary so we did go talk to people we you know, did uh, did our visits to malls and other shops and all talk to consumers who were you know shop, shopping over there uh, trying to get to know what is their thinking behind why are they here and stuff and plus we also uh, talked to a lot of subject matter experts uh, so that gave us more clarity on what uh, you know we wanted to go ahead and that's how we shaped our uh, map and also kind of validated what we were trying to you know visualize in our giga map and uh, yeah, that's uh, that's how like we engage with our stakeholders, and as well as in terms of sharing our uh, you know map with uh, the community, uh, we have presented in a couple of competitions as well in order to get it more out there. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much what we have been trying to do. And yeah. Mm -hmm. It's good to hear. Good to hear that you have been involved in the users and uh, or or like the people around and uh, and and good that if you can share the results somewhere that uh, then it can have a greater impact. I I I think that so it's it's good work that you've done. So it's it's valuable people to see and 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 understand the systems around consumerism. So good, excellent Thank work. You. Yeah. Thank you. And thank you, Marie. Uh, thank you, Peter. Um, so I would just like to invite uh, any other participants who would have any comments to share or any questions to ask the presenters as we're reaching to the end of the session. So if you feel like just uh, raise your hand and you can put your questions or just have a dialogue with um, the presenters and the commentators as well. Um, mostly we had referred to the book by Peter Jones and uh, I think we are really grateful that allowed us to navigate through our entire system design and bring it to a particular structure. 
so we uh, took the help of all the seven steps that are in uh, the book like right from listening to the uh, system to understanding it and then transcending it uh, towards the end to bring it to kind of solutions so i think mostly uh, that book has helped us a lot in bringing uh, giving it a structured flow into our the chaos of our thoughts when we were starting out so yeah and apart from that we have also followed uh, some basic uh, structures that nid mostly usually implement like the pastel framework initially to understand how do we look into the different nuances of the system right from uh, environmental economic social political and all the aspects of it so yeah thank you verina um anyone else who would like to add their share of comments um i have a thought so the way at least in my experience to what i understand the way we have dealt with the topic in nid a lot of it is you know learning on the fly sort of bit so a lot of models even though if you read about it in even if you want to study and incorporate it into your uh, process because of the complexity of the topic it does not really not necessarily it would fit so how the nicest um learning of this process uh, for me i would say was how you can you know learn from everything and still adapt it to the topic and the complexity that you're dealing with i think systems actually help you to broaden your mind to it and actually you know be able to put it down in a very tactile form like a giga map so yeah Mm -hmm. that's good to know uh, i guess i was thinking of uh, the systems way of mapping is more of the management style of mapping probably the, through the management lens and giga mapping is more um, um it's not well designed but it's it's in its raw form so that you can add upon did you had any any experiences with that and uh, how how did you adapt and uh, and was at the point that felt made you feel that that's how it should be i think a lot of it is on the information that you collect and the nature of it so it was purely basis of what we could find and since again it was a very time sensitive sort of a project it was in about 8 to 12 weeks 8 to 12 weeks so it's encapsulating all those learnings in the best possible way so yeah Hey, um, so probably I guess we are reaching to the end of the session. Um, so I would like to thank you all uh, for joining us today. Uh, I would like to thank Professor Peter Jones, Professor Murray um, for their valuable time. And uh, we'll be here back again on 18th of March. Um, and the topic would be frameworks and how frameworks have been designed and the system maps that have been used uh, to explore the uh, the the terrain of frameworks um so yeah thank you all have a good night have a good day thank you from me and if you want to access the chat the link for next week is there i know some people have had trouble with uh, getting through the paywall on eventbrite so even if you're not registered you can grab that link let me know if there are any other sessions you want to attend um you can you can grab that link thank you so much everybody the wonderful presentations mari peter and Akash, and of course, Aditi for uh, the sketch note. I'll be sending out notes on the session mm -hmm. in the next 24 hours, and uh, that will include a video and the sketch note if Aditi has it done in time. <laughs> and whenever the sketch note's ready, we'll send it out. Thank you so much. Such a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you, Cheryl. Thank you. And, and Akash, great job moderating. Thank you. Thank you for my behalf. Thank you, Mary, for Thank talking you, Mary. to me.